Question 1. Peace officers are in hot pursuit of a kidnapping suspect who enters a private residence. The officers. A. Should provide knock and notice since the suspect may not be the owner of the home. B. May enter without knock and notice, due to the exigencies. C. Must provide expedited knock and notice, identifying themselves and demanding entry, but they do not need to wait. The answer is B. May enter without knock and notice, due to the exigencies. Question 2. A peace officer approached a man walking alone through a suburban neighborhood at 3 a.m. The man agreed to talk to the officer, and the officer used the man's license to check his identity. After a few minutes, the man stated he needed to go inside and get warm. But, the officer kept the man's license for another five minutes and made small talk until a records check was completed. This is an example of a. A consensual encounter. b. A detention. c. An arrest. d. An illegal search. The answer is b. A detention. Question 3. A set of facts that would cause a person of ordinary care and prudence to entertain an honest and strong belief that the person to be arrested is guilty of a crime is called a. Probable cause. b. Reasonable suspicion. c. Ramey warrant. d. Either a, or b. The answer is a. Probable cause. Question 4. What two circumstances must exist before Miranda warnings are required? a. Detention and general questioning. b. Custody and interrogation. c. Custody and general questioning. d. Detention and custody. The answer is b. Custody and interrogation. Question 5. Which of the actions below is considered appropriate for a peace officer to take during the detention of a robbery suspect? a. Asking questions about identity and conduct. b. Cursory slash frisk search of outer clothing. c. Bringing victim to suspect for identification. d. All of the above. e. a. and b. only. The answer is d. All of the above. Question 6. Reasonable suspicion to justify a detention is defined as a. Enough facts and circumstances to make it reasonable to strongly believe the person is guilty of a crime. b. Enough facts and circumstances to make it reasonable for an average person to suspect criminal activity. c. Enough facts and circumstances to make it reasonable for a peace officer to suspect that the person may be involved in criminal activity. d. A hunch or instinct based on training and experience. The answer is c. Enough facts and circumstances to make it reasonable for a peace officer to suspect that the person may be involved in criminal activity. Question 7. If a consensual encounter is inadvertently elevated into a detention, the peace officer could a. Be held civilly liable. b. Be criminally prosecuted for false imprisonment. c. Face departmental disciplinary action. d. All of the above. e. a. and c. only. The answer is d all of the above. Question 8. What documentation provides authority for a private person arrest? A. Penal Code Section 834. B. Penal Code Section 38. C. Case Law. D. Civil Code Section 234. The answer is A. Penal Code Section 834. Question 9. An officer can make a warrantless arrest under which of the following circumstances? A. The officer has probable cause to believe the person has committed a misdemeanor outside of the officer's presence. b. A felony was committed, though not in the officer's presence. c. A felony or misdemeanor is committed in the officer's presence. d. a. and c. only. e. b. and c. only. The answer is e. b. and c. only. Question 10. When arrested for possession with intent to sell methamphetamine, the man begins to struggle to escape. As the officer handcuffs him, the man tries to pull away with such force that he injures his shoulder. a. The force used by the officers is excessive since the man was injured. b. The force used was reasonable and is authorized to prevent an escape. c. The force used was reasonable, although force is authorized only to ensure safety of the peace officer or other parties. d. The force used was unreasonable since officer safety was not in jeopardy. The answer is b. The force used was reasonable and is authorized to prevent an escape. Question 11. The elements of a lawful arrest require that the a. Person actually be restrained. b. Person submit to control. c. Arrest be made by a peace officer only. d. a. and b. only. e. b. and c. only. The answer is d. a. and b. only. 
Question 12. A non-uniformed peace officer shows identification to indicate their authority. Then tells the person that they are under arrest. The peace officer then proceeds to place them in a patrol vehicle and drive them to the station. A. All required information was given to the person at the time of arrest. B. The officer failed to provide the person with cause for arrest. C. The officer failed to provide the person with a statement of her authority. D. The officer failed to read the Miranda rights, as required, at the time of arrest. The answer is B. The officer failed to provide the person with cause for arrest. Question 13. Within what period of time must a person arrested without a warrant be given a judicial determination of probable cause? A. 48 hours excluding weekends and holidays. B. 24 hours excluding weekends and holidays. C. 48 hours including weekends and holidays. D. 24 hours including weekends and holidays. The answer is C. 48 hours including weekends and holidays. Question 14. What distinguishes an arrest from a detention? A. Length of time. B. Custody. C. Restraint, such as handcuffs. D. Nothing, the terms are interchangeable. The answer is B. Custody. Question 15. Which amendment to the U.S. Constitution requires a peace officer to apply the law equally to all people regardless of race, creed, nationality, religion, or national origin? A. Fifth Amendment. B. Sixth Amendment. C. Fourteenth Amendment. D. None of the above. The answer is C. Fourteenth Amendment. Question 16. A person, after acknowledging her Miranda rights, agrees to answer questions, but only if asked by a specific officer. This is an example of A. An express waiver. B. An implied waiver. C. A conditional waiver. D. An invalid waiver. The answer is C. A conditional waiver. Question 17. Officers can inadvertently elevate a consensual encounter into a detention by A. Using emergency lights. B. Using an accusatory tone of voice. C. Taking any action that might make a person think he or she is nor free to leave. Even if he or she is free to leave. D. All of the above. E. A. And C. Only. The answer is E. A. And C. Only. Question 18. At the scene of an accident, a peace officer is taking identification and personal information from a witness who is willingly waiting beside his car. This is an example of. A. An arrest. B. A detention. C. A consensual encounter. D. A legal search. The answer is C. A consensual encounter. Question 19. A peace officer places a person under arrest and reads the four Miranda warnings from the pocket card. The person fails to respond when asked if she understands, however, she begins to volunteer information when the officer is done reading. A. Miranda is complete, her conduct indicates implied waiver. B. Miranda is not complete, and these volunteered statements will not be admissible. C. Miranda is not complete, but these volunteered statements will be admissible. D. Both B, and C, are true, the answer is C. Miranda is not complete, but these volunteered statements will be admissible. Question 20. Uncooperative detainees may be handcuffed during a detention. A. True, and this does not necessarily elevate the detention into an arrest. B. False, and this action automatically elevates the detention into an arrest. C. True, but placing them in a patrol vehicle will constitute an arrest. The answer is A. True, and this does not necessarily elevate the detention into an arrest. Question 21. Which of the following individuals cannot be arrested due to exemptions in case and statutory law? A. A consular officer with full diplomatic immunity. B. A diplomatic officer with full diplomatic immunity. C. A diplomatic officer with partial diplomatic immunity. D. A. And B. Only. E. B. And C. Only. The answer is D. A. And B. Only. Question 22. The Miranda right to counsel can be invoked. A. By express request. B. Implicitly by the person's inaction. C. Automatically by invoking the right to remain silent. D. By all of the above. The answer is A. By express request. Question 23. According to U.S. Code, Title 18, Section 21 Leaders, how many people are required to constitute a conspiracy? A. One or more. B. Two or more. C. Three or more. D. 
No number is stipulated in the legislation. The answer is B. Two or more. Question 24. A cursory slash frisk search during a detention is limited to A. A search for weapons. B. A search of outer clothing. C. Manipulation of soft packages, non-weapons, without opening them. D. All of the above. E. A. And B only. The answer is E. A. And B only. Question 25. Which of the following amendments to the U.S. Constitution provides protection against unreasonable searches and seizures? A. First Amendment. B. Fourth Amendment. C. Fifth Amendment. D. Sixth Amendment. The answer is B. Fourth Amendment. Question 26. The Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees the right to A. A speedy trial. B. Confront witnesses against oneself. C. All of the above D. Assistance of counsel during criminal court proceedings. The answer is C. All of the above. Question 27. Officers respond to a report of shots fired in a residential neighborhood at 2.30 a.m. They find a victim and his vehicle severely shot up by a shotgun, as well as the blood-splattered suspect. They arrest the suspect, but they do not find the weapon. In this situation which statement is correct? A. No Miranda warnings are necessary before asking the suspect where the shotgun is due to the public safety exception. B. Miranda warnings are always necessary before interrogating a suspect in custody. D. Questions about the weapon would not constitute interrogation. The answer is A. No Miranda warnings are necessary before asking the suspect where the shotgun is due to the public safety exception. Question 28. Once a person invokes the Miranda right to remain silent. A. Interrogation must cease and cannot resume under any circumstances. B. It becomes effective only if expressly invoked, an implied invocation is not sufficient. C. Interrogation must cease, but officers may be able to try again after a period of time under certain circumstances. D. A. And B. Only. The answer is C. Interrogation must cease, but officers may be able to try again after a period of time under certain circumstances. Question 29. To be valid, an arrest warrant must contain which of the following? A. Name of the defendant. B. Amount of bail. C. Crime defendant is suspected of committing. D. Signature and title of issuing authority. E. All of the above. The answer is E. All of the above. Question 30. Peace officers must provide Miranda warnings to individuals about to undergo custodial interrogation in order to protect their A. Fifth Amendment right to free speech. B. First Amendment right to free speech. C. Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. D. First Amendment right against self-incrimination. The answer is C. Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination.